Social Mobility Listen to us. Chief Justice nominee Justice Sophia Kufu assures Ghanaians of quality justice backed by technology if approved by Parliament. National Service came to implement new farming policy in line with the government's planting for food and jobs program. GBC 24 and GTV, it's time for News R. Good evening and you're welcome. My name is Oyoko Kwakutre. I am Shelley At a voting in Parliament today, the Chief Justice designate Justice Sophia Akufu said one of her goals would be to promote quality and effective justice delivery when approved by Parliament. While condemning the act of mob justice, she said delays in justice delivery contribute to these actions and in her tenure, she would ensure the justice system does not become the reason for such aberrations. The Chief Justice nominee, Justice Sofa Abna Ekufo, started with a brief history of the judicial system to its present state. She believes that effective and transparent justice delivery is one sure way to curb corruption. Quality justice does not come necessarily cheap, but at the end of the line, it is value for money because you end up with... Um, a more satisfied populace. If we get all the money that we need to do the work that we need to do, that will ensure that all the more sooner than rather later, we will be able to do all the training we need to do for judges so that we improve the quality of service from, from the lower court all the way up. We will be able to uh, provide the facilities uh, that are requisite for, for, for running a good court. On the advertisement of cases on social media by some lawyers, she said just as the law frowns on it, she sees it as distasteful. She added that it is the responsibility of the General Legal Council to monitor the conduct of lawyers vis-a-vis -vis professional ethics. She touched on the difficulties first-degree students go through to gain admission at the law school. She disagreed that the law school should be scrapped. Justice Sofa Abena Ekufu was optimistic that a day will come when technology application in the judicial service will be available to even the lower courts to improve service delivery. She shared her opinion on ways to improve the administration of the justice system, the selection of judges to the various courts, and the quality of Ghana's court rooms. There is no doubt there's a lot that is still to be done in making sure that the, the facilities for administration of justice and for delivery of justice are uplifted, upgraded, improved. I believe that there's already in place the, a, pl a programmed plan for refurbishing existing courts. But backing that must also be a rolling maintenance program. You don't wait till it's broken before you repair. If your hand is always, is frequently and regularly on the assets, you can preserve them for longer periods. If approved, the Justice Safai Kufu will become the 13th but second female Chief Justice of Ghana. National Service Scheme is targeting a new policy soon to be implemented to breathe more life into its youth in agriculture program. The director of the scheme, Mr. Mustafa Yusuf, says the scheme's farming policy is in line with the government's planting for food and jobs program. Mr. Yusuf has told GBC24 that the scheme has received support from the Ministry of Agriculture in the form of fertilizer and chemicals to fight the army worm. Abdul Hai Mumin reports. A few years ago, the National Service Scheme introduced the farming module to augment efforts by the Ministry of Agriculture and uh, farmers in general to improve food security of the country. In the last couple of years, however, the scheme, the module, has not seen enough action uh, leading to some 
challenges. The director of the National Service Scheme, Mr. Mustafa Yusuf, is confident that if this scheme succeeds, if the module succeeds, it will go to augment and support the president's initiative of the planting of food projects. For the past two years, we've not been very active, but we were privileged that His Excellency the President of the Republic, after assuming office, declared nationwide campaign planting for food and job. And as a strategic agency, we thought it wise to take advantage of this laudable initiative. So we took this initiative to revive all our farms across the country. At the Winner Farms, we've planted 350 acres of maize, taking advantage of the planting for food and jobs. Our major challenge is the army worm, which has just attacked the whole country. The president of the National Service Personnel Association, Mr. Philip Quinn, says, contrary to the belief that a Greek is a demeaning job, his experience on the farm so far as a National Service person has given him different impressions altogether. We see a Greek as a punishment, and so often we say that it is the poor old men that go into farm. But look at me, I did BSc Agriculture in Kenya, I graduated. With BSc Agriculture. Now this is an opportunity for me to acquire practical training. Young female graduates are also excited to be part of the Agric module. I'm very glad we had a chance to come and apply for the Tlaida on this farm so that those who have not, have, any, have not had any farm experience will get a chance to know how uh, to apply the fertilizers on the farm. So this is what we are going to do. No, please don't go and point on the... Abdul Mumin, GBC 24, Dwenya. the capital of the central Gonja district of the northern region, could be positioned as an industrial hub if given the necessary attention. This means agricultural and port linkages potential of the town need harnessing to turn the town into a modern commercial transit point to facilitate trade between Ghana and her borders. In the following story, Abdul High Moomin reports that the transformation of Bupe is essential to reverse the rural urban migration. Bupe is the capital of the central Gunja district of the northern region. Now, this town has been earmarked for the construction of an inland port since independence. However, that dream is yet to see realization. This town sits on the banks of the Black Volta and serves as a transit point for cement, for fuel products and for the transportation of humans and other goods from the south to other parts of the country. In fact, it serves as a major point of transit for people traveling to Yeji and other places. However, this dream of becoming an inland port has not seen any realization yet. The establishment of an inland port to handle inland cargo from Burkina Faso and other West African countries, the Diamond Cement Factory, Produce Buying Company and Share Nut Processing Factory are some of the economic opportunities for commercial business in the area. The CEO of the Savannah Accelerated Development Authority, Mr. Charles Abugri, has expressed hope that the new SADA master plan will transform the Savannah areas with industries and guarantee the youth with sustainable employment opportunities. We'll be working at this to create, first and foremost, a plan, I think, around the entire northern Savannah zone on how you industrialize it, how you change and transform the economy in 25 years. Planned urbanization can be a source of jobs because, as you know, it generates real estate, it generates services. The Central Gunja District Chief Executive Dr. Mahama Mustafa said the government is making it possible for the people to have easy access to various locations through the provision of rules and also putting together incentives to encourage investors to invest in the northern region. Mm, SADA has been working on a couple of uh, uh, issues, a developmental uh, agenda. One of the areas that we have is the expansion of the, the river that we have to create uh, uh, inland port. Uh, this is of great importance. We have some of the vehicles from Burkina and the Red they still travel all the way to Tama. So when that uh, inland port is uh, built in Bupe over here, 
you realize that it's going to shorten the, the distance and for that matter it attract a lot of investors. Residents of Bipi are confident that if the SADA master plan is properly implemented, it will help to reverse the north-south migration. People from all walks of life will also come and not them alone. We have people within Bipi who also do the business, who sell and then do the buying at the same time at the market. Yeah, so it's a bu very busy place. Currently, Bipi serves as a fuel depot for northern Ghana. Feasibility studies are also being carried out in two locations in the northern region for the establishment of a sugar plantation and sugar factory to produce sugar not only for Ghana but for exports. However, residents must remember that sustainable peace is a prerequisite for development and that recurring conflicts were reasons why some investors were reluctant to invest in some parts of the Savannah Ecological Zone. Abdul Hai Mumin, GBC 24. Uh, for the interior, Mr. Ambrose Derry has urged the fire service to map out a strategy by which it will educate the public on the causes of fire outbreaks. He said, regular interaction with Ghanaians and safety regulations and the operations of the fire service will help minimize fire outbreaks in the country. The interior minister paid a working visit to the fire service in Accra. A representative of the Chief Fire Officer, Reverend Edward Ashon, outlined some achievements and challenges of the fire service and asked government to support the service with enhanced and adequate logistics for better service delivery. Management is considering entering into a public-private partnership with Tiberius Company, a private entity, to provide fire alarm systems like smoke and heat detectors as well as fire extinguishers for all homes across the country. At this meeting, the Minister for the Interior, Mr. Ambrose Derry, assured the fire service of government's plans to adequately resource it. You need to increase your interaction with the populace and the education of populace on your operations because regardless of the record, that you would claim some of it justifiably by statistics. The fact still remains that the Ghanaian public is of the view that the Ghana Fire Service could do better responding to fires. With the emergence of high-rise building in the country, fireproof claddings and safety regulations have been thrown up into the debate in seeking to prevent fire outbreaks. In an interview with the head of public relations of the fire service, Mr. Prince Anaglate, GBC24 asked if these high-rise buildings are monitored. It is by law, our LR 1724, that all those premises should meet certain safety standards. So the fire service rep at the town and country technical committee who assess your burden plan submitted for permits. Then they will assess it. First of all, the thing that they look out for is to determine um, exit, adequacy of the exits on the high rise burden. They also determine firefighting facilities such as landing valves, um, hose reels, and fire hydrants. The first one is for us to determine those things even before you start the construction. That is why we will give you an engineering drawing that would de The junior division of the Ghana Armed Forces Command and Staff College, initially known as the National War College, NWC, was established on 14th October 1963. Thalmataki, GBC 24, Accra. A spell of rainfall left a road at Po and that flood waters. So grave was the situation that commuters along the road heading to Aplau could not move for several hours. This is the portion of road just after the Temamotori runabout leading to Aplau. It was submerged in flood following a rainfall. This disorganized traffic and brought movement to a standstill. It will be recalled that two years ago, the country was struck by a horrific incident at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle in Accra. The incident, which is popularly referred to as the June 3rd twin disaster, 
seem to be fading out all too soon. This is because the very things that resulted in the Junta disaster are still in full force in parts of the country. One of them is the erection of structures in waterways. This is believed to be the cause of the flooding at home this afternoon. According to a resident of the area, a gutter constructed near the road impedes flash waters whenever it rains, resulting in the flood. They do some water do here. They do block the water. So any time the rain falls, this area The flood has displaced many artisans and vendors who ply their trade along the road. The fuel station nearby was also not spared. Many vehicles were stacked, leaving the road with a very heavy vehicular traffic. Authorities must act fast to save the situation before the whole nation is thrown into another June 3rd disaster as the rains continue to pour. A four-year-old boy, Mayor Nunya Moses, is reported missing. Mayor, who is brown in complexion, was last seen at Afuenga Zongo in the Volta region, where he had accompanied his mother, Dorcas Agbeku, to a funeral in the set town from Accra on 9th June 2017. Mayor Nunya Moses, who was last seen in a white striped t-shirt, khaki shorts and slippers, left home at about 12.30 p.m. on 10th June 2017, but has since not been seen. All efforts to locate Mayor's whereabouts have proved futile. His family, together with the police, are calling on the general public who have come across a boy who fits the boy's description to kindly report to the nearest police station, especially in the Volta region and in Accra. Persons can also call the father, Mr. Eric Kulevome, on the following numbers, 0243-577-432 or 0275-30. 6803. Mayor Nunya Moses speaks only English. Hello, good evening, and welcome. Time now for some business updates brought to you by NIB and NS Chemist. I'm Dorothy Ajimai. Seven months after its commenced operations, Managers of the Greater Accra Transport Executive, operators of the Rapid Bus Transit say the company is running at a huge loss. The company, which needs to hit 25,000 passengers per day to break even, is currently doing 9,000 passengers per day. Managers of the company are therefore upbeat that the company will be out of the red in the next six months when the Kaswa and Adenta routes come on stream. These are the over 245 Ayalolo buses procured to run the full complement of the bus rapid transit in the Greater Accra region. The Amasaman of Fanko Tudu stretch is up and running with 48 buses, 9,000 passengers a day. Due to the non-existence of the necessary road infrastructure on the Adenta Accra and Kaswa Accra routes, the rest of the buses remain packed, raking in nothing for the company. Apart from the revenue losses that occur, while these buses remain at the terminal, they are Masaman to the route, which is supposed to hit 25,000 passengers to break even, is currently doing 9,000 passengers per day. While admitting that the company is not currently making profit, the chief executive of the company, Samson Jamra, is hopeful that things will turn around in the next six months when the Kaswa and Adenta routes become operational. The government's involvement is providing the infrastructure. The operational arrangements are supposed to be taking care of itself through the fare box. So its sustainability depends on how well we manage the system so that we can be able to cover our cost of operations from the fare box. We are looking at within the next six months we should be capable of breaking even. Looking at the rate of growth of the patronage we expect that within the next six months we should be able to be self-sustaining. He also called on the banking sector to support the company in this formative period. And since we are running commercial operations, we are looking up to our financial institutions to support us in, in the period where we are not breaking even until we break even. The Greater Accra Transport Executive is fully owned by the government. It is expected to sustain itself through the revenue it generates. Much of the success of the company, however, depends on the government's readiness 
to invest in the initial road infrastructure on which the bus rapid transit operates. Africa is richer in energy resources than any continent in the world. Mention can be made of the Igna Dam project in the Democratic Republic of Congo, which when developed can meet all the energy needs of the continent. Currently, Africa is far behind the rest of the world in energy supply, despite the huge hydro and solar potentials. Bridging the African energy gap dominated discussions at the Africa Energy Forum in Copenhagen, Denmark. Edward Nyako reports. This is where the Africa Energy Forum was held in the Danish capital Copenhagen. The Africa Energy Forum is a platform that sees to it that policy makers, financiers, developers of energy come together to think through how best they can make sure that like 623 million people that are out of or do not have access to electricity get electricity in Africa. About 2,000 players work in the power space gathered in Copenhagen to ensure that every home in Africa is lighting up. According to the World Bank, two in three Africans do not have access to electricity, a situation described as a drug on growth. This is because without electricity, health clinics struggle to provide basic services, children are unable to get proper education, and businesses cannot grow and thrive in today's global economy. Even where there is electricity, people are still experiencing power shortages. Ghana is no exception. The primary cause of the poor quality of supply and low electrification rates lies with weak power networks as well as funding. Addressing these challenges require new approaches to development financing. At a panel discussion, the focus was on New Day for Africa, a way forward. The Chief Executive Officer of Africa 50, Mr. Alan Ebobosi, said his institution has been working with government and private sector to speed up the process of bridging the energy deficit facing the continent. The project we're talking about globally uh, is something, uh, is a phase of the, the life cycle of the project that is risky and many investors do not want to touch to that. that Africa 50 will be resolute in investing in the project development phase, hopefully reducing the risk of that phase. State Secretary for Development Policy at the Danish Foreign Ministry, Mr. Martin Bill Hammond, said traditional donor communities use their resources to attract investment into the energy sector in Africa. Now what is it that Denmark is, is prepared to do? We can create what some have called sort of triple win uh, situations. Uh, you know, we, we leverage private capital know-how technologies, we will create a return on investment, and we will provide sustainable growth if we can ensure that those investments go into, into the world. The Sierra Leonean Minister for Energy, Mr. Harry McCauley, said access to electricity in his country is below 50%. As steps have been taken to reform the sector. The coordinator of Power Africa, Mr. Andrew Hershkowitz, said to ensure a government in Africa get value for money when they sign energy contracts, his outfit will support them build the capacity of those leading the negotiations. Each of the over 600 companies, including technology providers, power developers, law firms, among others, that took part in the energy forum mounted stands, showcased their products and services. The 2017 African Energy Forum in Copenhagen has been described by many as very successful. This is all aimed at making sure that like 623 million people in Africa that do not have access to electricity get their homes lighted so that the children can learn. But one thing that is crucial is that the focus this time around was more on renewable energy, and solar, wind, biomass, land, what have you. And Africa has solar in abundance. And thankfully, the price of PV or photovoltaic of our solar panels are coming down. So that gives room for Africa to tap into some of these technologies to make sure that the energy deficit within the continent is reached. Edward Nyakon reporting from Copenhagen, Denmark. On the interbank market today, the CD depreciated by peso against the pound and the US dollar. Compared to the euro, it's appreciated by two pesos. Up next is the book.
On the commodities market, light crude is trading at $44.74 per barrel and cocoa at $2,027 per ton. Gold is also going for $1,255.30 an ounce. The business segment is brought to you by NIB and NS Chemist. Coming up is the health segment. Please. You're welcome to this segment, probably brought to you by Yamvita. Neonatal hypoglycemia is when the glucose level of a baby reaches less than 30 milligrams in the first 24 hours of life. It occurs in about one to three out of every 1,000 beds. Speaking to GBC24, a pediatrician, Dr. George Poplampo, said low blood sugar levels in babies are more likely when they are premature, have a serious infection, or need oxygen right after delivery. Hypoglycemia means low blood sugar. A baby's sugar level is regulated by his hormones, with the key hormone being insulin. Insulin helps his body to store sugar and releases it when the baby needs it. It is normal when a baby's blood sugar levels go down in the first few hours after birth. Most healthy babies can cope easily with these normal ups and downs in the blood sugar level. However, some babies can be at risk, including babies born to moms who have diabetes. Newborns get their glucose from breast milk and formula. When a baby has just had a feed, his sugar level is expected to go up. However, keeping the right level of sugar in the blood by babies is termed a delicate balancing act. A pediatrician, Dr. George Pupulampu, said the right sugar levels in a baby in the first few hours of his life is critical for its survival. When a baby is born, a newborn, um, what the child needs first is to breathe. And after the breathing, the child needs what? Food. Because if we don't feed the child as early as possible, he can come into a state where the sugar reserves the child has in the body gets exhausted. And when get that, uh, gets exhausted, the child comes into a state of hypoglycemia, means uh, low sugar level. And this low sugar level can lead to unconsciousness, which virtually leads to hypoglycemic shock. Dr. Bublampo cautioned against feeding babies with mashed kinky to treat hypoglycemia. At home, they get smashed kinky and force into the throat of the child, which is the, the, the person who has been affected. And that is even very dangerous, and that's not even the right way to go. What you can do as a lay person now, I don't know, you can pass a tube and pass the food through the tube. Because why is forcing the, the person to uh, take in the mashed kinky, she can get choked. And choking is it means you are from frying pan to what fire. He said it may be difficult for mothers to tell if their babies have low sugar levels. However, subtle signs such as irritability or being very sleepy and floppy should be reported to the medics when noticed. The health minister, Mr. Kwekwa Jumamainun, has lauded the efforts of private sector in partnering government to provide quality health care to Ghanaians. Commissioning one of such private public sector initiatives for diagnosis, Mr. Juma Menu said the government will continue to strengthen public-private partnership in all sectors, especially the health sector. Diagnosis is key in every medical condition. It is done to determine the exact condition of a patient thereby improving patient care, ensuring the most effective treatment, and helps to limit health care spending, which is a major economic issue throughout the world. Diagnoses come in the form of computed tomography, CT scan, laboratory test, 
magnetic resonance imaging MRI which gives different information about structures in the body that can be seen with x-ray ultrasound or computer tomography CT scan the director of sunshine healthcare mr. Bernard M Joseph said diagnosis gives accurate and timely reports to medical practitioners top surgeons the top physicians depend a lot on this because it helps them with the correct uh, treatment the correct surgeries to be done and the patient actually recovers much faster so diagnosis would always remain a tool and the awareness with the general public is also increasing the Minister of Health Mr. Kweku Ajimai Menu said the increase in non-communicable diseases in the country calls for more diagnosis centers which will give accurate reports for treatment he said government will continue to strengthen public private partnerships in all sectors to the benefits of the country. The burden imposed on government is huge, not only because of the financial implications, but because loss of mandates due to the morbidity and mortality. It is against this background that the government is working on public private partnerships in all the sectors, including the healthcare sector. Sunshine Healthcare provides preventive health screening radiological and laboratory services, as well as specialized consultation services to patients. That's it for the health segment. Hello, good evening. Let's talk sports. I'm Theophilo Sampa. We start off on a footballing note where GTV Sports Plus and Quest Free Sports have been given the right in Ghana to telecast live all matches of this year's FIFA Confederations Cup. The competition to be staged in Russia starts tomorrow. We have been joined by the channel manager of GTV Sports Plus, Mr. George Dumutin, and Derek Debo, the sales manager of Quincy Free Sports, to tell us more about this particular development. And so, hello, gentlemen, and thanks for passing through. Well, let let me start from you because you are home. So, we give you the aquaba. Welcome once again. George, confirm to Ghanaian, um, is it true that? Uh, GTV Sports Plus Quasi have been given the right? Well, yes, I'll say that uh, GTV Sports Plus by extension GBC and then uh, Quasi TV um, have the right to broadcast the FIFA events for 2017 and 2018 in Ghana. If I need to explain further, it is to say that um, Econet Media, who owns Quasi TV, acquired the rights for uh, free to wear in Africa. Okay. and to distribute to the various uh, territories in Africa. Yeah, and by that arrangement for Ghana Territory, um, Kwesi TV and, G and GBC own the right uh, exclusively. Okay, this, this looks more interesting. Let, let me come to Derek. Derek, uh, so with this particular announcement and development, what does this really mean to corporate Ghana? Well, it's an exciting time for the Ghanaian fan and especially all authentic Ghanaian brands, it's for you to come and expose your brands to the poor place. The emphasis here is on free. Yeah. We have exclusive rights for free sports of the broadcast of the World Cup mm -hmm. in all of South Saharan Africa. Mm. And we are partnering with the national broadcasters like GTV to bring it to the fans for free. And the emphasis yeah, is on for free. <laughs> We have, that's why we are Quest Free Sports. So all advertisers, it's an exciting opportunity to connect with your segment and grow your brands in this territory and beyond. Okay, so, so Corporate Ghana coming on board, how do they, tonight they are listening, tomorrow the tournament starts. Um, is it not too late for them to come on board or there are rules for them to really, still, still, how do they get on board? If it's never too late. Okay. We take the opening ceremony tomorrow in Russia. The game starts tomorrow. It is on for this uh, whole, uh, the break of the season, that is the end of the season, till uh, 2nd of July. And so there's opportunity for corporate Ghana to partner us, not only on the comfort, okay. in the pipe is the FIFA Under-17 Cup that also comes on in October in India. And of course, the ultimate is the Mundial, that is Russia 2018. And it will be a showpiece. We're praying that the Black Stars qualify so that the Ghanaian fan can, can be treated. Okay. Uh, Mr. Lumuti, so uh, 
this announcement is good. Corporate Ghana now eager to come on board. But which mediums are Ghanaians expected to watch it? It's free. Yeah, well, um, it is to say that um, the two uh, institutions coming together, is, is, uh, um, we're coming together because we want to make sure that we provide every Ghanaian the chance to watch it. Every and as you know, yes, GBC with our GTV brand is nationwide. Mm. So we're taking the signal to every corner of Ghana for everybody to see. And that's the reason why it is good for corporate Ghana to get on board, because it's really a good platform for them to sell themselves. So it is going to be GTV, GTV Sports Plus, Quisi Free Sports, and then for the, this, these three stations are going to carry the Comfort Cup, the Under-17 um, uh, World Cup, the Women's World Cup Under-17, Women's Under-20. And then when it is time for the main events, the FIFA World Cup in Russia, we'll also have Obunu TV coming on board to do commentary in the Ga language. So we're sure we, 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 we get to reach everyone. US so S3. to mention, yeah. it is GTV, GTV, GTV Sports, Sports Plus, Plus Quasi Free Sports, um, and then Obunu TV. Obunu TV, TV yeah. will come on board. KFS, is, it brings a twist. We bring a twist to it. You can actually watch anywhere you have internet on your Quasi app. You can watch it. Just go to Google Store and your uh, Apple uh, iOS, and then you can download the mm -hmm. Quasi app. Okay. You can watch these matches live. Good. On your app, I just can't wait because it starts tomorrow. But Mr. Lumuti, Derek didn't mention uh, any contact. Maybe someone really wants to really get on board quickly. Uh, are there any numbers? Where is that? Well, I will, I, I will say that, I mean, um, we are not waiting for them to come to us. We yeah. have made a move to get to them. So, I mean, they can, they should, they're certainly going to hear from us. But just in case anybody wants to come around, they can come to GBC or go to uh, Kwese TV at Laboni. And then certainly it will, it will be hooked on. We, we're talking TV. Is there any opportunity for any of the radio stations that would like to also take a live? Yeah, we're, go we're going to roll out the plan for radio, I mean, down the line. I'm sure next week we'll, we'll, we'll roll out the plan for radio as well. Okay. Thanks, gentlemen. But again, final words before you go, it is free, right? Yes, it is <laughs> free to air. That is, that, is, that is our mode of broadcast, free to air. But then you can also watch it on the Quasi Pay TV as well. Yeah. <laughs> At Quasi Free, free Sports... KFS on your screens, we say for the fans, and we are here for all fans of football. We know football is the heartbeat of the nation and would we'll go all lengths to bring Ghanaians all premium content for free okay. on uh, KFS. Okay, there is this thing that viewers love to have. When there are tournaments like this, they need expert analysis here and there. Are you going to see by chance just watching it enough after that, getting some more insight in terms of studio discussions? some updates here and there before tournament starts and celebrated. Do you have anything for those who decide to stay with GTV and question you guys? Well, I will say that the collaboration between the two institutions, the two networks, GBC and Kwese TV, I mean, certainly our viewers can be assured that they're going to see the best of everything. The legends. I mean, they know, they know the track record of GTV Sports Plus, mm. GBC, when it comes to the World Cup. Okay. Kwese is a new brand on the market. They also have their swag. They are bringing it on board. So the two of us together, we assure Ghanaians that they're going to see the best of broadcasts. Well, we, we, this, uh, we want to draw the curtains on. Again, remember that you had it live. Tomorrow, you are watching it either on GTV, GTV Sports Plus. The Sports Plus is they are where the legends live. Kwesa is saying they have their swag. We so, are for the fans. Okay, you are for the fans. And yes. GTV Sports Plus is for the legends. And yes. GTV is for... Okay. So legends and fans coming fans together. Coming together and doing it. Okay. Thanks very much. That's sports. And then uh, latest on the fire that gutted the stores. Building of Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. The fire service has managed to bring the fire under control from spreading to adjoining structures. The blaze completely destroyed content of the store's department. A staff dedicated, detected smoke blowing out of the stores and raised an alarm. Firefighters got to the spot within minutes, by which time the fire had taken a full toll on the store's department. Two important structures, are, which are in close proximity with the disaster scene, the GBC training school, and GTV Sports Plus Department were saved from catching fire by the firemen. Nearly three decades ago, GBC lost valuable materials when its library caught fire and destroyed. I cover videos. In tonight's fire, documents and stationaries are items which might have gone up in flames. The worst in the stores are perhaps the reason why the fire quickly 
of the zinc content of the building. Ghana has experienced pockets of fire disasters lately, and the latest GBC is the sequel of the trend. Up next is entertainment. In Green, a South African film director says Ghanaian movie John and John is a complete replica of his movie scheme. He says Kofia Samoa, the director of the movie, could have come out with a different story angle instead of copying his movie. Before 6 a.m. tomorrow, the weather update for tomorrow, Saturday, will be on the GMED website as displayed. Visit it and get yourself updated in terms of weather. So we meet same times tomorrow. Is We're bringing news tonight at 10 p.m. Please make a date.